Let's take a look at what Rob Rishi at La Mirada HOA board president has to say about his community's collection success story. I would call it Southwest. We're, we're a mile west of the Strip, close to the Silverton. It's uh, probably four years old, so f fairly new, and uh, the whole area is still growing. From the beginning, um, I've been on the board now almost a year, and um, it's, it's been a great experience, and it's amazing where we've come from. Um, roughly four years ago, I, I think our first family moved in here. We have about 20 families, uh, 20 homes, and um, there was a point where probably just, we had five homeowners at one point, probably two years ago and um, we were literally um, doing the landscaping ourselves, um, you know, painting fences ourselves, and um, a lot of our homeowners, um, all five of them, were, were prepaying assessments to help us financially stay afloat, so to speak, and, and it was a tough environment, and um, you know, one to two years has now passed, and, and we're almost totally full. I think we have 19 out of the 20 homes now, and, and we've gotten great new homeowners. Um, the uh, property management company that we worked with, Colonial, our uh, previous community manager, now Sharon Brenners, our current uh, property manager, they have been outstanding in getting collections from the banks, following up on the liens and, and all that. And, and that's truly been the success story. And it was literally, um, for lack of better words, a ghost town. Um, only five homeowners. And um, quite frankly, I don't think if we would have pulled together like we did, um, we, we wouldn't have survived. And I know Colonial Property Management at one time wanted to you know, it was a point where they had to determine if it was feasible for them to even stay on board with us. And, and they worked with us, and um, it, it was truly a, an ugly situation from a financial standpoint. I think at one point, probably besides those five homeowners, the other 15 homes, I would say a large majority of them were either bank-owned, foreclosures, um, just going through that whole transition process. And, um, you know, not for probably a year ago did it start to where actually families started to move in and everything. Colonial kind of worked behind the scenes and, and, and doing the collections with the banks and, and then the homeowners, we, we literally would um, treat the expenses, you know, as if they were our own. We, we, we didn't have a landscaper, we, we had to do the landscaping ourselves, we did maintenance ourselves and, um, you know, it was a point where um, it, we were prepaying assessments and if it wasn't for that, we had never got to the point where we were today. The job that uh, our community managers have done ha has been the key because we, we truly didn't, I guess for lack of better words, know how dire it was. And they again worked behind the scenes and kind of educated us from a board standpoint as to what to do, how we could you know, be involved with, the, get every family involved and, and even the new families that have moved in, that, that's kind of been the key is that we all take this personally like a family, so to speak. Well, we're, we're not out of the woods yet, certainly, but it, it's been like night and day. Um, we have, I believe, 19 out of the uh, 20 homes are occupied. Um, so we're almost close to fully being occupied. I think the, the key now is we have great families that live here. Uh, both the folks that have been here from day one and the folks that have just recently moved, I think, take this community personally. They take the area community personally. So I think we learned that, you know, expenses are important so even to this day even though we have a little more money and we've been a success story I, I think we'll always remember where we came from and we still take care of it um, you know personally and professionally I, I think you have to draw a line uh, you know to give them that advice you have to draw a line between what uh, how far to push and, and how, you know you can't raise the money too much because you know everybody's financially strapped but yet you also have to be responsible and again, getting to network and getting to know your, your families and your households in the community makes a big difference in that you would, uh, we, we become one family, so to speak, so striving towards the same goal. So that's, that's the advice I would give them is to work. Every household counts, every, get people to get, go to the board meetings, to educate themselves, and, and we all kind of learn together. By, by far, my, my number one advice um, would be, and again, as president, I, I had the opportunity to work with the uh, property management company and watch them collect behind the scenes and do you know, the things that they specialize in. And that's by far the number one piece of advice that I would, would give to them is to work with them. It, it's, it's, it's a tremendous feeling, uh, especially, again, even the city of Las Vegas and all the surrounding areas are not out of the woods yet, and it's a tough economic environment. But to know where we were and, and to think that, that maybe we wouldn't even have a community here today is kind of an ugly thought. But so 
it, it's kind of like when you build something or start something small and you see it grow, it, it's very satisfying. And uh, I'm convinced uh, some of the homeowners even here today might, might just live here for the rest of their lives. Well, that was a great story. It's really impressive. I, I think for our viewers, it gives them some encouragement that no matter how bad maybe it is right now, it can be done. As long as you have the policy that Debbie talked about and you're, you're implementing it, it can be done. So, great story. It's doable. It's doable.